Hey, Blake Rudis here. I'm excited to show you a really cool tip. This is how to make a beautiful sky replacement with things like blend if and masking. And it's going to give you something that you're going to want to practice with here. Here's the before, here's the after. Before, after. Now, this way of doing a sky replacement does have a small learning curve to it. But what I'm going to tell you is that it's much more rewarding than any AI software or any program out there that promises it can give you a sky replacement. Let's jump into it. So we've all been in a situation like this where we go to some of our favorite places. We've got a great vacation plan. We're landscape photographers, whatever the situation might be. We take a shot of what it is that we're, we've gone the distance for. And guess what? The sky sucks. And that's like the worst nightmare for a landscape photographer. So some people resort to AI to replace skies, but I'm going to tell you that something has been in Photoshop for years that can help you replace a sky almost instantaneously. And I'm going to show you how to use it today. And that thing is called blend if. So I've got this image right here and I want to put this sky on top of it. Okay. Usually when I take my skies, I even include the foreground there. That way I have some reference as to where my foreground element is so that when I'm replacing that sky, I can easily put it into this image or any image for that matter. So in order to get this on here, someone might start with select and mask or select subject or the quick selection tool. I don't even go there. Okay. The first thing I do when I'm going to do any sky replacements is I just turn that layer on. I double click this layer and I use something called blend diff and I'm going to move this over. So you see what this looks like. Okay. So here are your blend if controls and what blend if does is if you see this thing that says this layer, these are the controls for layer one or the layer that we have selected. That's that layers shadows and highlights and how it's going to blend if. Now, blend if stands for blend if it's gray, blend if it's blue, blend if it's red, blend if it's green, whatever that might be. But the key here is also the underlying layer. We wanna make sure that we're protecting the underlying layer. So think of it this way, blend if, remove this layer's shadows, okay? So we're clicked on this layer, removing the shadows, remove this layer's highlights, or protect the underlying layer's shadows, or protect the underlying layer's highlights doesn't look like magic right now, but here's the cool part, especially when we start to get into sky replacements, go to where it says blend if blue. Okay. Now what we want to do here is we want to put this sky into the blue of the underlying layer. Well, if you look at the way this is controlled, this side is actually going to be anything that's opposite of blue. You see the full potential of blue over here. So if we move this over, we're actually going to be putting our sky everywhere, but the sky. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over until we can start to see this beautiful landscape unfold. And this landscape is actually just blending right in to that sky back there. Now, if I go too far, you're going to see it's going to start peeling away at the sides because it's telling more pixels of blue to exist underneath it. So we'll just move this over till we get here. The great part about blend if, if we press alt or option, we can do this thing where we feather it out and it just makes a beautiful transition instead of a nasty pixel based transition. The other thing here is now I look at this layers blue. What do I want to do with this layer is blue. Do I want to take some blue out of this layer or some highlight out of this layer? So what you can do here is this is where you get maximum control over your sky replacements. Now I know that Photoshop is going to be doing some other things with sky replacements in the future. Am I going to be using it? Maybe I've always done sky replacements this way. I feel like I have more control. So check this out. If I move this over this way, and then once I get to where the point where I see blue disappearing from my image, I'm going to press alt or option to feather that over. And then feather that into here like this until I start to see some of that shine through. And then I can even start to blend some of the underlying blue through. This just gives me a much better blend for my sky replacement. This might seem like a lot of work for a sky replacement, but it's not. It gets very quick and very easy once you know these blend if adjustments. Now I'm almost done. I'm going to wrap it up here. If we go into our color overlay right here. This color overlay is showing me anywhere on this image where this is actually blending uh, besides the blue in the background. You can see the magenta all over the place. You can change this color to whatever color you want. I like to have it at magenta. So I'm just going to press OK. So now I'm going to put a mask on this layer, press B for my brush tool and just brush anywhere that I see that magenta to get rid of that in my sky replacement because I don't want that sky to be going into those areas. This is like some of the hidden tech that you're going to see here with sky replacements that just makes your skies just blend so beautifully. As I said, there's going to be AI options. There's going to be new options in Photoshop. And are they going to be a treat? They might. But I'm telling you, there's nothing like getting in there and getting a nice clean sky replacement all on your own without AI or without any other fancy stuff. So I'm going to turn this color overlay off right here. And look, we've got a beautiful sky replacement. One more thing. We're not quite done yet. I'm going to click on this mask. 
And this is where most sky replacement software that you're going to use is going to fail. Look at the background here and how there's some mountains back here. You see that now that's not showing up in the sky replacement because it's a very tricky thing to conceal. So what we're going to do is click on this mask, click on the gradient tool here. And in this gradient tool, I'm going to make sure that this is set to black to transparency, which is one of your default gradients. It comes with Photoshop, press OK, and then click down here, press and hold shift to move up. And we've got a nice, beautiful transition sky replacement back there that we can even go a little bit higher on okay and then if we need to move it unlink the mask press v for the move tool move that layer around and this sky can go anywhere we want the sky is literally the limit here and you can replace it if you need to if you want to see more awesome tips like this please join us at the photoshop virtual summit